Ooh, Got put it. it on the record. Put it on the record. <laughs> uh, on the One record, month. I think Elon Musk should be put up against a wall and shot. <laughs> that, that, this well, is not I... parody or satire. Okay, as well say, there's like this no is a direct sign. threat to his life. <laughs> I'll, I will staple him to the wall so you can execute him. See, Mark had a little bit of whimsy to it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my giant novelty staple gun. Look uh, at my regular size non novelty gun. It's not funny. There's nothing <laughs> funny about this gun. <laughs> oh, wait. What if I pull out a huge gun and said, that's not a gun, this is a gun? Would that be oh, funny? That's one of the, the like two good jokes of the <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I guess we should get rolling on it. Um <clears throat> do you remember what kind of intro you did last time? In. Yeah, I don't it. In at number one hundred, it's the comedy with no jokes. It's two thousand and one, a space travesty. Yeehaw! Hi everyone. This is Films and Filth, where we decide if a film is film or the film is filth. It's the Citizen Kane of podcasting. This is Matt here. That was terrible. Don't do that again. This is Luke. I don't, this I, is yeah, Mark. I, I kind of rolled out of bed. I rolled out of bed the wrong way, really. I, 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 <laughs> my bed was still a bed until like eight minutes ago. I just turned it into a sofa then. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, I finished watching this film about 23 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I finished watching this film about 27 minutes ago. Yeah, I woke up this morning and watched this film. <laughs> man, I was ahead of time, man. I finished it like a whole 36 hours ago. Wow. You must yeah. really like it. No, I just watched it before you. There's, how does how does temporal <laughs> viewing of a media... I, I guess if you hit something on... Well, no, if you hit something open at night, you think you might like it, but you still might hate it. Read The Phantom Menace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I if I'm over at someone's house and I have there's a dish that I a side dish I don't want to eat but it's on my plate anyway and I eat it really fast so I get it over with, definitely something I like. I guess <laughs> I guess my biggest disappointment is um like the whole time I I've always convoluted this film with uh, I guess there's four or five versions of 2001 a sex odyssey so I was expecting more <laughs> titillation and we just got like CGI feces instead. I was expecting less titillation than this, actually. <laughs> oh, because because we have. I wasn't very... expecting any amount of titillation. <laughs> yeah, but if I see titillation, I expect it to like show me something. <laughs> well, I'm I... talking about the Sex Odyssey, <laughs> which this is not anyway. So I'm like, it doesn't promise you that. I just mixed it all up in my mind. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. I I just want to believe that the director or writer or producers of this, probably the producers. Just put all those weird horny scenes in to to make Leslie Nielsen happy and he didn't specifically ask for them. It's like right. Caligula. That's all I want. They just happen like, to know that his previous films had a bit of that. So it's yeah, like Cal- Caligula they where they got Malcolm McDowell and Helen Mirren and, and and then just like um the, the penthouse guy just like inserted like, you know, long scenes of hardcore sex. <laughs> <laughs> you think Larry Flint was like a ghost editor on this? Oh, and what on space travesty? Yes. Yeah, probably. I mean, he was a ghost editor on so many yeah. movies. No one American worked on this. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. All my credits were in French. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I watched the copy <laughs> yeah, you gave me. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Luke got all French credits. Did you get French yeah. credits, Mark? Got French credits. Okay, and they're just French credits. You're always in French. Okay, because was that like a Monty Python touch? Or this like is nobody's... In French. Did anyone speak English in this movie except for Leslie Nielsen and Bill Clinton? <laughs> you know, that wasn't the real Bill Clinton, man. What? Yeah. His Bill Clinton impression was worse than Matt's, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's me well. insulting this guy or complimenting Matt's pretty good Bill Clinton impression. Was there even there was there a single good impression in, like in this film and in, in, in a film with 35 impressionists? Anyone feel like taking an island holiday? Yep, you're better than you're better than. <laughs> were there two different ones? There were two different ones, right? Well, there was. A, it there did was feel like imposter. one guy was doing the voice a lot better than the other. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Even though they, I think it was the same actor. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have made sense if they had to... different actors. Or do you know like, your bill? Yeah, because the rest of this film made so much sense. <laughs> weren't people tired of Clinton jokes in 2000? I'm just maybe. I mean, the French weren't. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I, I cannot believe this film was 2000. 
That's the wildest part of it for me. Like Clint was definitely on the way out. Everybody knew that. It was the end of his term. He could not get reelected in 2000. So why would you put Mm. something that dated? I mean, it's it's dated when it comes out. Nobody, (laughs) nobody thought like that back then. You just were, you just took whatever, you know, it was, if you remember the (laughs) nineties living in the U S it was just like Monica Lewinsky jokes, like wall to wall. Like there's a reason why part of a reason why people are, really extremely nice to her now is because she put up with just so much shit just being basically the victim yeah <laughs> and, right uh, the most powerful man constant. on the world seduced her and she was the villain somehow <laughs> yeah and like endlessly like you could tune into dave letterman jay leno everybody and they would just get everyone but probably conan o'brien wasn't that much of a hack but i have no idea maybe i'm uh using rose-colored Are glasses you- here you got to get Leno in his denim suit and with a car, you know? That's that's how you do your yeah. Leno. And then he yeah. blows up his face. My car exploded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we're, we've been doing way too many impressions for people who can't actually do impressions. I mean, <laughs> this fine. Is... That fits this film. Yeah. That's appropriate. Okay. Oh, I'm so more impressions coming then. Yeah, was this... hello, I'm Les Nielsen. This is what I sound like when I talk. <laughs> you sound more like the actual villain <laughs> maker who Mark Sorry, farted. Me. Yeah, I'm farting and flying around with my farts. I apologize. <laughs> uh, yeah, you sound more like the villain from Moonraker who the guy from this was a ripoff of who was actually the guy from Moonraker sounded like Elmer Fudd kind of which you go Drax way more make sure fun. you say his name you go Drax <laughs> say his name Hugo Drax <laughs> anyway so I don't think any of us had seen this previous to this no I saw it the most previous because I watched it before y'all but <laughs> I thought maybe this would be a parody of 2001 a space odyssey the title would lead you to believe that <laughs> yes I, I thought that I'm... it would be they got the one scene i guess that fits that more or less is this one. french canada jealous of the fifth element <laughs> hmm the fifth element did not cross my mind when watching this really this is basically i mean okay admittedly after it leaves space it's not about space anymore which is about 20 minutes in but <laughs> <laughs> early on it was like oh they're trying to do fifth element or men in black Men in Black is oh. definitely the vibe I got. Okay, that, like, I got that vibe, yeah. yeah. I was about to say, I was about Imagine to Imagine little... bringing out such a crap Men in Black wannabe this soon after Men in Black. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I Imagine was having about... the brass balls to do that. I was about I've to seen it. That... Oh, like, Men in about... Black International is you 10 times that. better Amazing. than this. Okay. It was bad. And it was 10 <laughs> times better than this. No, I am. Um... Yeah, I was going to say, like, the fifth element didn't end with, like, a stage play situation, but it kind of did, so. <laughs> but it was so much. <laughs> no, that was, that was much more work. in the center, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. It had opera. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. It was, it, you know, it's like, well, okay, we did. Th-. So in that case, I guess there is some commonality with the fifth element then. Okay. <laughs> had someone, a woman who was not good at speaking English in it. Right, but she yes. wasn't like she wasn't like grown in a tube to be the perfect specimen of a person. I mean, Although that seems to be Leslie prove... Nielsen's character's opinion. <laughs> yeah, you can't prove that. Uh, what's her name? Kunzman. The, the, the lady I can't remember who turns any into character. an alien and farts. Kunzler. I literally just watched this. Wait, I've what was the first name he used? What was the first Kunzler? name? I said Kunzman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's Kunzler. It's not that far off. Consular may have been grown in a tube. She is an alien okay. whose farts make her fly. And then okay. Her Hello, my name is Kunzman. Cunt Kunzman. <laughs> I mean, that would have been a better joke than everything else in this film. <laughs> we could rewrite it as we go. That's fine. I don't think anyone will be offended by that. But someone <laughs> theoretically did write it in the first place. And 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 I forced Mark to write a summary. All right. Um semi-plagiarized and i honestly don't know if this is correct at all we open with marshal richard dix saving a fast food restaurant from a hostage situation right after us arresting osama bin laden at a basketball game off screen later at the police station dix's boss introduces him to a police worker named cassandra minaj who tells dick about a plot to clone president clinton on a moon base named vegan and dix is informed that he will be sent to the moon to infiltrate the operation Physical 
comedy hijinks ensue on the space shuttle. When Dix goes to Vegan, he meets with Lieutenant Bradford Shitzu and is briefed about the main suspect in the cloning, Dr. Griffin Pratt. He is also introduced to Captain Valentino de Pascal, who he will share quarters with. While investigating Pratt along with Shitzu, Dix also meets a Dr. Ushi Kunstler who is working with Pratt and tries to seduce Dix. While Minaj is, <laughs> Minaj is directing Pratt Distracting Pratt over dinner, Dix attempts to sneak into Pratt's cloning facility but ends up getting paint everywhere and cloning sheep and getting paint all over the cloned sheep. Pratt threatens Dix and has Minaj abducted, but Dix rescues her along with the prisoner, President Clinton, and they escape back to Earth but find out that the president they rescued was actually a clone and said clone ends up in the White House because of them. They also find out that Dix's boss was in league with Pratt the entire time. Dix and company, in disguise, attend a concert by the three tenors in Paris, where Clinton is supposed to play saxophone after the first intermission, and many international dignitaries are also in attendance. Several attempts at sabotage are carried out with varying levels of success. The real Clinton manages to prove that the clone of Clinton couldn't know as much saxophone as he does. They fight, and Dix fights Pratt. The real Clinton and Dix are both victorious. Pavarotti gets hit by a rocket in his ass, making him hit a high note, which forces Kunstler to shed her disguise, revealing herself as an alien whose farts propel her around the room, but Cassandra shoots her with a slingshot, causing her to explode into green slime. The Earth is saved. Yay! Yeah, I, it just reminded me, <laughs> this film does indeed start with a joke that he just arrested Bin Laden. Yeah, he says Ozma Bin Laden. This film also predates 9-11. Yeah. It does. He'd already blown something up. I, mean, I was about to say, yeah, think... how well known was Bin Laden pre-9-11? Actually kind of well known because um, they already tried to blow up the World Trade Center in 1993. I didn't know that was the same guys. I thought that was different. I thought that was like domestic terrorism. I read no, no, article... you're thinking of Oklahoma City, I think. I read mm. an article where they actually t- uh, like arrested the guy and they're driving a- away from it and they take his blindfold off and show him the world trade center and they say see it's still there and he says it wouldn't be there if i had more explosives mm. so, that's, 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 that's like did, a setup for he a say, i would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those <laughs> <laughs> osama bin laden should have put out the book if i had done it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay um we do get like i we, Oh, by the way, like, yeah, when you had to do the proper names a lot in your summary, that that was a lot funnier than the movie. I didn't, <laughs> like I didn't just... know who any of those people were because, like, yep. it, I, I the heard only the name word I Cassandra. definitely remember is Dick Dix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, D- I remember Dix and I remember Cassandra being said a bunch, but like, I didn't understand anything Cassandra said. I didn't remember anyone referring to anyone by the name Pratt. But anyway, yeah. here we are. Yeah, but I'm just saying when you had to put like three names in like two sentences, that that was kind of funny. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, Clinton. Clinton was never named. Did you notice that? Yeah, it's just Mr. President. It's a man who needs no introduction. I mean, yeah, you've got him, you've got Hillary, you've got the jokes about interns. It's pretty freaking clear <laughs> who we're talking about. <laughs> um, I want to see all the QAnon people watch this movie. And break down like the predictive programming of it all. But yeah, you got like Hillary Clinton cloning programs. The you joke know. is you're making them watch it, but um, yeah, <laughs> I, gu- I guess we should get to a few of the stars of the film. Uh, we'll start with Orangina, I suppose. You know, I I don't really mm. drink sugar water too much anymore. That says alcohol in it, so I haven't had Orangina in a long time. But it's I like it's Orangina got a little bit. It's got a little less sugar than your average soda, I believe. The yeah, calories like, don't are... drink it. Mm. The, the only like I even, calories. The only place I even know where to get it is at the bagel shop, and um, and Matt, you probably know this. It's in Atlanta. There are like three bagel shops that are worth the shit. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of product placement myself. No, that that's 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 for the side. Is that a flavor of that, or is that regular? That's just it's not Dr. like Pepper. Sakura Blossom uh, flavor or anything like that. <laughs> that's refreshing. <laughs> Cucumber. Uh, no, Dr. Pepper's pretty rare here, actually. Just getting the regular one. It's, it's I, got, I bought you... like a 24 pack from Costco and it's all basically all that's in my fridge. It's too cool. bad you don't have the, the can that has like the anime titty women on it. 
Yeah, I just, 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 I'm sure I sent you the picture of the one where she's holding a tray and it just says DP on it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I when I first saw Dr Pepper in Japan, I was like, whoa, you can't put that on a can. <laughs> you can put cans on a can here if you want. <laughs> you can do the can can. They, yeah, they do the can can. They have the can can. Had like the Ray Ayanami energy drink or whatever. So I, Luke, I paused it yeah, the, uh, yesterday. LCL. Yeah. Yeah. And Mark kind of mentioned to me that Leslie Nielsen basically does make it through this movie relatively unscathed. It's hard not to like Leslie Nielsen. Does this movie make you like him less? No, because <laughs> the thing about Leslie Nielsen is his whole performance is he's really dry, right? So mm. if he's just walking through and there's not any funny jokes around him, it doesn't seem any different than when he... there are funny jokes around him. <laughs> so what what's funnier, this or for I, I think he Planet? mostly showed up to be he showed up to be himself and he did a good job of being mm. himself. I don't know what else to put it. Yeah, yeah. What what is your favorite Nielsen just out of curiosity? Probably Naked Gun. Okay. For, for me it's Police Squad episode 1. Mm. Yeah, have like, you seen for the some reason squad? I've seen like um collections of Police Squad clips but I've never actually watched the show. I mean, the, the this whole show itself is basically a collection of clips. Oh. Things are well, three yeah, hours yeah. total. <laughs> I think it's like the uh, the creators only directed the first episode because it's weird. It falls off kind of a lot after the first episode. It's still it's still good, but I think Naked Gun the movie is better than all of the other episodes besides the first one, if that okay. makes sense. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess you can't really be too angry on a a, a guy who's technically past his prime just riding the g- gravy train you know to to the grave i mean gravy train te- to the grave i mean technically his career was supposed to be over after like the uh, the 60s or 70s so he's basically this is almost like a third phase for him like most of us mm-hmm. don't get it so is this is this the worst leslie nielsen which i'm gonna say no because i have an answer i for doubt that. it <laughs> oh what's the answer Oh, um, repossessed. You think this is worse? You think this is better than repossessed? I, I feel like repossessed is, think... might have been worse. I no, mean, I better. Just... <laughs> no, no, this is better than repossessed. It has at least like space stuff to look at. Re- and I repossessed guess. has that theme song that, if you've heard yeah. it, will never leave your head again. Yeah, and, bring, and bring, bring, repossessed. Yes, exactly. I've only so. seen it once. I saw it when it came out in the theater. I still remember the damn theme. I think I had it. I think I had it taped off of um, TV because I was eight years old at the time. But or something. I I, th- <laughs> I think that was the first time I ever saw boobs in a movie, though. Oh, that's depressing. Okay. I mean, well, I, be... at the time, I was just like, "Whoa, what's that?" <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a really extremely abrupt boobs scene. <laughs> yeah. Like, Whoa. And one one of the um. One of the curses of of doing the podcast this way is we we have several of these spoof spoof movies. Uh, we will mm. see a little more Leslie in the future, but I don't think we're gonna see him as the star again. Okay, he yeah, shows up at Stan in... Helsing. Yeah, I mean, if I had my way, like Airplane would be on the hundred best list. To be honest, <laughs> so are you yeah, calling that above Naked Gun? I I I mean, you you have to pick one to like represent the concept. You'd probably pick Airplane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if you, you, it's it's not like a starring Leslie Nielsen film, but like it's as an ensemble piece. That's kind of like yeah. the great. I don't know. That's sort of the greatest. It's the greatest non Mel Brooks parody film ever, and and Mel Brooks still is kind of doing a different thing. I tried to. When put, did um, the when did the scary movies start coming out? Two thousand six. Wait. Way, that's scary movie. Late. The first scary movie came out in like the late nineties because it was really soon after Scream, and those first two were actually good because the um, Marlon Wayans and Sean Wayans, I think, directed them, and then Zucker Abrams Zucker did the third and fourth, and those were bad because oh, two thousand and two thousand one were the first two. Yeah, they're right around I, the same time as this. That's, that's what I was going to ask. Is like the so the the lineage of films, if you want to call it that, that this came from, was then basically replaced by those, right? Yeah, because what were the last few that uh, preceded this? There's Dracula Dead and Loving It, where you actually do have Mel Brooks mm-hmm. directing Leslie Nielsen, and it's not that great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. What what else? Saw that in the theater too. He did uh, Spy. Spy Hard. 
Yeah, yeah. Which had uh, Andy Griffith is a bad guy, which was uh, actually pretty cool just to watch the two of them chew scenery at each other. Like you'd okay. ever see. I don't think you really see Andy Griffith as a villain or anything else. I think he was just, they were trying to just give him another career as well. Well, but... I'm sure he's a villain in real life. Probably. Actually, I'm not sure of that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Hope he get in the truck. <laughs> but sorry, I, I'm, I'm having a look here. Oh, well, you know, I opened up my iPad and the first thing I got was a Matt Damon puppet. Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. Matt yeah. Damon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That was yeah. somewhere between the Matt Damon, Schwarzenegger, and Clinton, Matt. That was incredibly impressive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was good. gonna I like to do all of my impressions at once if possible. <laughs> so Saves time. So nobody else was bothered by like that nobody really spoke English very well and was kind of mumbling through the whole film. Cause I felt like I'd it was a weird situation where I kind of couldn't tell what anyone was saying on top hmm. of I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I picked up on that I don't recognize anyone in this movie except Leslie Nielsen, which is why I just keep talking about him. Maybe from coming from Europe, I don't have any issue of understanding anyone's accent. But I was going to bring up Schwarzenegger because there's a whole thing where people make fun of Schwarzenegger's accent, but he actually... This this film made me really appreciate how much confidence he always had. And it, I feel like nobody in this film has confidence in their english speaking mm. ability there is one point when cassandra says something and i really didn't know what she said and leslie nielsen was like what what are you talking about like they just <laughs> it was like you felt like maybe he didn't actually know what she said and they just kept filming leslie nielsen's gravestone says let her rip as an epithet as a fart joke. nice yeah. that's pretty good yeah. I'm, I'm having a look at what else he did shout uh, out to the big man and that's a yeah. movie he's just in. Okay, we got the Naked Gun, Repossessed, which, wow, that's really early on. Okay. More Mark, do you like gun. the way Matt completely ignored the conversation we were having and just switched <laughs> over to the thing he wanted to talk about? No, I'm just having a look at what, what his... No, no, uh, we know exactly what you're doing. It's was. just that we were like sort of ambling around a point and then you're just like, no, let's talk about this instead. <laughs> Ah, Which okay. is like a very classic Matt behavior. I'm not surprised by it. <laughs> he did start researching Leslie Nielsen like five minutes ago, but he's just still not done. No, I'm done. I did. I figured out because I felt like I was just forgetting some uh, a few of his parodies that uh, got, you know, fell through the, the brain uh, sieve. Uh, wrongfully accused, I guess, would be would be the big one. Uh, Mr. Magoo, I guess, doesn't count as a parody. It's not oh. good. But yeah, you know. I didn't watch that. Looked the trailer looked terrible, so I was like, "No, I'm not even." So he did like I... a live action Mr. Magoo. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So maybe that's where you fell off the train because you were saying to me earlier, like like off air, that you thought this was where you fell off the train with him. Just it was before this because I didn't see that. Yeah, I mean, I just I just know that it was before this. Wrongfully it may have accused by hard or wrongfully. <laughs> I think wrongfully accused really might have been it, but I don't remember if I saw that or not. Yeah. I know I saw Spy Hard. He's wrongfully accused the, um, like, fugitive type. The fugitive type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, he's. I have. I've only seen one scene four. from that, but I thought it was legit genius. <laughs> which is the bit where he's escaping from the train, and the train like continues to pursue him. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! When we get to Stan Helsing, it'll be depressing because it's he's he's eighty three and one year away from death. Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I guess Spy Hard is the last film I saw of his in the theater. I think superhero I just superhero movie, Men with Brooms. Is that is that I guess that's Harry Potter. Oh, and... superhero movie. He's just like the Uncle Ben figure. Yeah, I'm sure he's yeah. just like showing up for a second. These so, um, Men with Brooms. What the I, hell it, is it? it? It's about it looks curling. like a real movie. It's about curling. Who directed this? Paul what Gross. What's going on? Written, Gross. And, written, directed, and starring. Paul Gross. Wow, his uh his IMDb headshot looks like eerily perfect. <laughs> well, I guess he's a perfect man. Good for him. That's why he's not in this movie. He directed episodes of Why the Last Man. <laughs> they make a why not? series of that? Okay. Why not the last man? That's what yeah. they said. That's one where I didn't even know they filmed it. I just thought it was a comic book. Okay. It got canceled real fast. It was one oh. of those streaming things where it's like they got canceled real fast and no one was happy about it being canceled and everyone forgot oh okay i what was it, a year was two it like good i didn't see it but some okay. people definitely like it got canceled mark 
Yeah, that <laughs> was my that. fault. I didn't watch the Cowboy Bebop live action. I mean, I think <laughs> nobody did my fault. for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I I like anime. Like, just make anime. You know, Hollywood. Are you listening? Cyberpunk anime. It was good. You didn't yeah, even just... have to make the game. <laughs> Okay, a animates. moment of silence for Cyberpunk. There we go, because it, it arrived dead. Is that why? No, no, no. no. It, it, no it, 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 it's I still mean, alive. It, it's still going. It, yeah, it it was bought by like 18 million people, and they pretty quickly fixed all the problems with it. So Cyberpunk does not need your pity. Okay, that's I think cool. quickly. It took them like two years. No, I played a little <laughs> of it, and it was, it was a really nice open world shooty game, and I just wasn't in the mood for it at the time. And someday, maybe I'll go back to it. Our friend it, Matty played it, but he um he just mainlined the story, so he didn't really run into any glitches. Yeah, after Breath of the Wild, I don't really want to go back to an open world game where it, the world it, isn't trying to kill me constantly. It's really difficult to go back to any other open world games after Breath of the Wild. Yeah, except like Elden Ring is the only one I've played, but obviously Elden Ring is yeah. like Breath of the Souls. Yeah, well, it's like it's like oh, the bro. two open world games where you can tell that the um, actual human beings put level design into the whole world. Yeah, rather than a computer being like mountains. Yeah, and I just <laughs> I love the idea that you just walk over a hill and then a gigantic thing just murders you and it's hilarious. Mm. Like they both both of those games do that. Anyway, right. Cyberpunk might do that too. For all I know, it probably doesn't though. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna make my fifth my my fifth timer that whenever I think of the cyberpunk game, I just think of nineteen nineties Mean Streets. That's the image I have in my head for that game. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Makes sense. You know, photo real VGA, a PC. I've seen video of it. I, you might have shown it to me. I don't remember. I used to play the crap out of it, but probably before you met me. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you might have shown it to me in the last two years or so. I don't know. I, I did notice, um, and I, I guess he doesn't. He's, I would, I would like to think he's embarrassed about this now. But Water Koenig had like a production credit at the beginning. I, I thought... think that's a different Koenig. Oh, Koenig. is it? Didn't say water? Okay. No, I don't think it did. I mean, it was in French. Let me, too, so maybe it was probably check. the French version. I mean, he's he's been involved in some pretty bad movies uh, off and on, so it wouldn't that be was... out, it wouldn't be completely out of the uh, out of the realm of possibility. That would be he had a running um, recurring character in Babylon Five. You, well, I mean, I mean, Babylon Five's good, but I was about to say, except for the CGI, but yeah, Werner. Yeah, and it also Werner means they can do a lot more space stuff than if they had models. <laughs> uh, Werner Koenig, not Walter Koenig. Oh, uh, okay. oh, it's still uh, with a W though. Okay, well, I don't feel bad because he's flashing on the screen. And he, after this, a year after this, he produced a movie called "Suck My Dick." <laughs> nice. Is it spelled? It's spelled an interesting way, or is it just "dick"? It's called "Suck My Dick." <laughs> nice. So the poster for it just has like a middle finger doing this. Uh, down for, for 3.9 out of 10 on IMDb is oh, wait, we a just one hour, that. 22 minute, one hour, 22 minute feature film. What, okay. You got to tell us the plot of suck my dick. A successful novel writer called Dr. Jekyll feels haunted by Hyde, a character from his latest novel who somehow materialized. When Jekyll awakens from a surreal nightmare, he realizes that Hyde took his penis away, leaving <laughs> only a hole behind. Which, what finally turns out to be the beginning of a psychological and at times quite campy journey through male fears of loss of power, identity, and youth. That okay. review is that summary was written by Crazy Cool Cat. All right, keep it crazy, Cool Cat. Crazy Cool Cat. I guess I yeah, I gotta say the whole thing. can't can't abbreviate. <laughs> okay. Wow. Did did anybody think we were gonna go down that rabbit hole? I, I assume we're going to go down all kinds of rabbit holes because what else are we going to talk about? <laughs> yeah, it's not like we can talk about. Let's list our favorite film. jokes from the film. Okay, the police uh... are here to protect disorder. I, hey, I, I wrote down a few lines. I wrote down the police are here to protect disorder. I like that. Oh, that was good. That yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. Way... That was the oh. bit where they were literally just trying to make um, naked guns. So makes sense. Those yeah. were the best bits. Should this um, have just been called the naked space gun? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think I I imagine that the people the who name is just because naked it was gun, coming out around two thousand one, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think that the people who made Naked Gun would have like co-signed this this shit. I think this is <laughs> not 
on their level. I don't. But think. you could steal the title. I mean, if they call it a naked space gun, it's it's not breaking copyright, I believe. I mean, he's playing Frank Drebin. There's no, there's really no. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, they, argument. It, that's that's like that's he like even does gun. like the, the voiceover and stuff. Yeah, that's that's like the, the poor sure man's a... copyright where you send yourself the uh, you know, you send yourself Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like Kubrick's ghost should have sued him for 2001: A Space Travesty. Or I guess Kubrick <laughs> was still alive at this point. Oh, what? Who? Kubrick? Stanley Kubrick wasn't he think... alive in 2000? No, no. He yeah, died, he was like, still alive and him? filming the COVID vaccine, um, COVID virus. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> he was filming 5G and COVID virus back to back. Yeah, I think he died in '99. It was like right. It was right before Eyes Wide Shut. This out, is actually so. what killed him. Yeah, I was say, was clearly March seventh, nineteen ninety nine. I mean, he he made it out in time. Okay, that was the that was the first day of filming for this movie. <laughs> they sent him the script to ask for his blessing, and he just dropped dead when he saw it. <laughs> do you think? Do you think they could have? Would it have killed them to just put like a monolith in this movie? Yeah, they, they <laughs> did. Yeah, they did, did at they? the beginning. Yeah. Right at the start, they oh, flicks yeah. it over and it squishes the monkey. So, like, I don't entirely remember the opening sequence but did they explain why aliens were like hanging out on the moon uh no that was just explained to like the origin of shit. life yeah that's that kind of infuriated me where it's just like oh yeah aliens are real and we can go to space and we're on the moon like that's even less realistic than arresting osama bin laden in a Knicks game they talked about <laughs> stificus at the beginning yeah, that was good. They had it, right. There was a p- penis on a planet or something next to you. There's a penis right. star sign. Yeah. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, and then the joke with the white dwarf, where it's just a dwarf. Right. 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 <laughs> Stomping on a myriad of worlds. Yes. Yeah. So. Some of the stuff in this movie looked good. And it was kind of. I don't know. It was at least some of it was not bad to look at, as long it, as it, it wasn't. It was like some French production company just threw a bunch of money at a project. So, like, they had some effects, they had Leslie Nielsen, they had sets, costumes, but no one involved thought, it occurred to them that, like, oh, it takes talent to make a film. So, <laughs> I looked up what the budget was, actually. Oh, I told it I. It's like $45 million. Yeah, $45 million. <laughs> yeah, but hmm. uh, how much of that just went into Leslie Nielsen's pocket? Do you think? I was going to say, how much I would I hope wander. all of it. <laughs> I hope he just got all of it. Like, grab the bag, dude. Uh, no, I yeah, some of it was definitely laundered, and I think a lot of it went to uh, CGI for the people who weren't employed doing other movies. <laughs> did tons of CGI, like there wasn't this much CGI in films typically back then in two thousand. Mm. Like Starship Troopers may have had less CGI than this. <laughs> I think it had a lower budget than this. <laughs> no, it did. It had a pretty no. big budget. No. Yeah, I like to think Leslie Nielsen ran off with the bag of money, the entire film crew chasing him. That, that's great. <laughs> I think that's what happened with me on the set of Road Trip. Yeah. Do you think that he farted and flew really far to get away from them? Yes. Yes. I think Benny Hill music was definitely playing the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Were you saying, who was, what are you saying you thought the soundtrack was okay? I just thought it was generic comedy mm. music. It was almost, almost too good. It was almost too... Um... Or probably was just stock. It was inappropriate. It was like, <laughs> hey, it was yeah. 45 million. They could throw 2 million at a proper soundtrack, I guess. I mean, you could, pro- how much does it cost to get a proper soundtrack? <laughs> this used to be all soundtracks, though. That was not like, you wouldn't get like minimalist for a for major release. You wouldn't get like synth soundtracks. You would get the orchestra. It yeah. Happen. Yeah. 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 So I guess that's just indicative of the time, right? But mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I you, except for ideas, I guess they didn't really steal anything, right? Except for everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they only stole everything. They stole the president's identity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what kidnapping is, stealing people. <laughs> Indeed. Not wrong. Okay, let's see. I, I'm still I'm still trying to take your challenge of uh decent decent jokes. I think when when he was meant to sing a song and he sung in the navy, that was pretty funny, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I believe cunt yeah. is a four-letter word for word. Okay. I think I was just trying to make my own jokes by that point. <laughs> yeah, the, the the all the bits with the opera were at least... They were probably the best bits, actually, like any of the, the jokes where they're all singing to each other or whatever. 
my musical nightmare is the three tenors singing the hits of Elvis Presley. Well, says my baby, love me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think like, uh, like all the scenes where someone like did something and flew around and it looked bad were like, like the bad physical comedy was so much worse than the worst jokes <laughs> that it kind of made everything more tolerable when it wasn't that. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I guess the, the, the signature joke is the, the, the space plane though, right? Did, did he did he shit fart or shard? <laughs> I think it looked like there were holes in his underwear that had shit coming out of them. So I think sharding. Uh, my my impression on. was that when the gravity got turned off, his shit flew back up his ass. <laughs> 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 That's how I read it. <laughs> so it's like a new form of precaution it, that you're looking like at. it. Yeah. Like it maybe it impacted and then exploded out in bits and that's why there were all the different holes in his yeah. underwear because that was he was like con- bouncing back and forth because yeah he was going so do if you think that was his... to explain the joke it would have been much funnier they should have had someone come out and explain what just happened mm-hmm. <laughs> like like the the beginning there would be like a big thing where it's like well physics is an interesting like have neil degrasse tyson come out and explain it to you yeah or well, actually, who would have been the who would have been the Neil deGrasse Carl Tyson Sagan? Carl Sagan was dead, I think. Oh, he's already dead. Oh, he yeah. dead already? Wow! I think he died, died before contact. He died in like the nineties, yeah. It, it, right about Close. the time of contact, right right that right movie after. killed him just like Eyes Wide Shut killed Kubrick. Man, yeah, these movies kill. Movies kill. Um, um, movies you kill. Had, the, you this have... podcast is called Movies Kill. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I don't think anyone was giving you science information. That's how George Bush was president. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been Bill Nye at the time, because this is about the time that Epcot and Disney World had Ellen's energy adventure, and their scientist is Bill Nye, the science guy, who tells you, well, alternative forms of energy just aren't quite ready yet, so we're just going to have to keep using oil for now. (laughs) Well, it's like, before that, wasn't it like the the miracle of energy sponsored by General Electric, and then General Electric shows you how it powers your fridge yeah it's like <laughs> it, i'm not saying that it was better There's later because book. i think it was better before when they had corporate sponsors but they still had corporate sponsors where it's like yeah. the future of tr- driving by general motors driving a car <laughs> driving a car no, no no they did the world of motion it was exxon yeah for, the, for that one and um they put out a comic book where mickey mouse also tells you that we're just not quite ready to use alternative forms of energy and then goofy's like oh, oh gosh mickey <laughs> If it had been oh, a couple of years later, mad. it could have been Al Gore coming out and doing the science. Yeah. Yeah. And that would have been real meta. <laughs> <laughs> An inconvenient truth. About your butthole. About your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> How would that be if you, had a, yeah, if you had a fake Clinton and the real Gore, but the Gore is like fourth wall breaking? Better That's than one- that's more of an art film. Yeah. That's more of an art film. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think that if this happened during the Bush administration, they would have put Bush in it as much? Was it, did we? Oh, I yeah. Think... Everyone was constantly yeah. Bush. Yeah. What, uh, Harold and Kumar. Even Transformers, and... you see it, uh, a spoof, spoof Bush show up. I don't yeah, remember yeah. that, but. <laughs> see, Harold and Morty Guantanamo Bay. Do you mean no, Harold I and Kumar? I, I, I said Harold and Kumar. <laughs> I'm pretty no, sorry. I, 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 I swear I said Harold and Kumar. Okay, you just, it was just there was like a um, Robert Altman stratification of conversation going on at the time, so it probably just came out wrong. I'm sure I said I'm sure I said Harold and Kumar. <laughs> no, I want I want Harold and Maude to go to Guantanamo Bay to be made, please. <laughs> Mark, considering, uh, yes. considering what we learn oh, about nice. Maud in that film, it'd be extra depressing if she ends up in Guantanamo. <laughs> <laughs> no, she gets broken out. It's fine. That's a truly so, dark ending for that one. And then, and fine. then he smokes weed with with Bush in his man cave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, anyway, the it? fans of this movie are hoping to see um, Hillary Clinton in Gitmo any minute now. So. Yeah, the that's, that's still movie. they still have. I think everyone is preoccupied with uh, wanting to save Trump when he gets arrested right now. All those people, okay. like they think that they are single handedly going to break Trump out of prison. 
or something. I like well, that he called for a protest, but the only people who showed up were people saying he should be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's ingenious. See, that's the genius of the Orange Man. They can't arrest him now. Yeah, they can. Oh, they, they can. can. They probably will. They can. Then, yeah, I'm just like, yeah. I mean, well, well, at least he bought is, a week or so, right? This is dating the podcast, but Justin Roiland was just found not guilty, and everyone is like, a bunch of people on my Facebook feed are like, oh, is he going to sue Adult Swim and make them give him his job back? I'm like, no. Is anyone truly guilty? He's guilty of something. He's guilty of... <laughs> I mean, he of might not be guilty of the messages. exact things he was taken to court for. Those screenshots of the messages he was sending underage girls are all still out there. So. <laughs> and literally everyone he worked with talking about what it's like to work with him. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't... You can't put that back in the bottle. I don't know why he would even want that job back. He might as well just get it. Yeah, imagine job. turning up for work. Like, all right, guys, let's write a new episode of Rick and Morty and just, just sat in a room with people who hate your guts. I mean, I've played his video games. He could just get a job doing anything where he just does the same voice over and over and people will pay for yeah, he it. Just, and it's great. He somehow made him. a career out of one joke, so I'm sure he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Someone will hire him to do something better than 2001 A Space Travesty. Do you think this is what an episode of Owl My Balls would be like? No, that so would what? just be that would just be nut nut torture. Okay, uh, and it might be funnier. Watching, it might be funnier. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the problem. You need a Leslie Nielsen to be the star, though, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, the you he's he brings he definitely brings something to this, even though it's not enough. But he brings something to this anyway. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's, so, is it just like I've got enough affection in reserve that I will sit and watch Leslie Nielsen even if it's bad? <laughs> We've tasked ourselves here, so it was our task, right? Yeah. Like yeah, with the Schwarz like Schwarzenegger, right? Like I, I mean, some of his films are bad, but I can't see them as bad films because I got to see Schwarzenegger for ninety minutes. So I well, think um, let me. Th I'm thinking of the worst Schwarzenegger movie I've I've seen probably. You're going to watch Hercules in New York before this podcast is over. Yeah, I haven't actually like, seen so that good. one. Yeah. I think maybe <laughs> like uh, the sixth day or something. And that was still better than this. I guess Banger. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. It was go raw. There were classics. It was raw comprehensible. Deal, what's your, just... Luke, what's your least favorite? Schwarzenegger it probably movie? is raw deal because it's a film that was clearly not made for Schwarzenegger. I don't think it doesn't think really fit seen that one. Is that on the top 100? Are we going to see that? It's no. not, it's nowhere, no. but I, I did go, Um, I was on the, yeah. Oh, it, wait, no, I know what my worst Schwarzenegger film is, Terminator Genesis. I still oh, like okay. that better than this. I'll, I'll go, then how about Raw Deal? Um, I My did, problem I, is that I have an emotional dislike for that film where I just don't feel anything about this. I, I don't dislike least... it or like it, it just, time passed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had fun at that movie. Uh, the thing, the, the Terminator film that I hate the most is Salvation because it was just kind of like a lot of sadness and it wasn't we, fun. We, really. went to see, we went to see it on opening night. I remember coming out and yeah. I was like, well, it had to be good because Michael Ironside was in it and Michael yeah. Ironside isn't in bad movies. <laughs> he, Michael Ironside was in it for like five minutes and then the submarine he's in gets blown up. But that, and he that was, was also looked really tired. Yeah, but that was like my entire like argument for it not sucking. I mean, <laughs> do you like remember how basis. I was booing the film? Yeah, when cool we were <laughs> I was booing this film in the theater. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I mean, That's the film that um Christian Bale ruined. Yeah, yes. Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale's worst performance. Definitely. It was also, the film originally barely had John Connor in it, which I think would have made more sense for that film. Well, the, do you? And you then know he the like original... he demanded that he be a more major part. Well, there was some uh, leaked. I think it was a leaked ending that never actually got made, but it was that in the end, John Connor dies, and Sam Worthington's cyborg takes his face, and he becomes John Connor, mm. which. Honestly, would have been good enough to at least make me hate the movie less. But they were yeah, it would have been something at least, right? Uh, since it was leaked, I was like, "Oh, here it comes, the cool ending," and it didn't happen. I was like, "Come on, <laughs> boo!" Is that when you're? That must have been when you booed. No, I booed. I booed when um, Anton Yelkin showed up and said, "Come with me if you want to live." You feel bad about that now, though, don't you? Yes, I do. I want Anton Yelkin to live. Yes. Okay. Um. Yeah. I was should have looking... gone with him then. 
Yeah, yeah I should have. How, how would 2001 A Space Travesty be if they if it had, had Christian Bale as Dick Dix? <laughs> he would have been really angry, probably. <laughs> I think it would have kind of worked in a weird way, though. <laughs> Like, like no one told him he was making a comedy. <laughs> well, I don't know. Going, now he's got a shard. I don't know if you guys have been following this, but there is talk of a naked gun. They've been trying to do a naked gun reboot with Liam Neeson, which isn't that far removed. Is it from... just because his name is a bit like Leslie Nielsen? <laughs> I, <hope so. laughs> I think um, but thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, Liam Neeson could absolutely do this. He could, he could do seen, this whole thing. Have you seen the clip where Liam Neeson ends up on one of the Ricky Gervais comedies? No. Is it basically it's the what there was the pretty bad one he made with Warwick Davis. Life's too oh. short. But okay. um, there's a scene where he's <laughs> is that a joke about Warwick Davis. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> uh, there's a, it, like Boris is in, I just got it. <laughs> he's in Ricky Gervais's office. They're talking, and then Liam Neeson walks in and he's like, I want you to teach me how to do comedy. And the bit they're doing is like they're trying to set up jokes, and Liam Neeson is just saying like grimly serious, not funny <laughs> things. So like, okay, well let's try a little skit, right? I'm a I'm the doctor, and you come into my office. What do you say? I'm riddled with cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, 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 he could do it. He could do it. So I mean, like, yeah, he could do just a great like straight man sort of thing. <laughs> So let's hope that he he'll uh, you know the way things usually go these days. What he'll do is he'll do one Naked Gun movie that's a combination of the plots of the first three Naked Gun movies, and then the second Naked Gun movie will be two thousand and one, a space travesty. And then they'll <laughs> and then they'll be they'll have to get um O.J. Simpson's character. Um, I was gonna say what movie what football the player should they get in, and then he'll turn out to be a murderer soon. <laughs> <laughs> what was the guy that was just the one that's already a murderer? <laughs> what the guy what, in Firestorm? Brady? Is that yeah? Is he dead? Tom Brady's alive, but he's okay. you know not been found guilty of murder yet. Okay, well, well, he, obviously he's in the movie before that, so <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't like it's in his contract. OJ Simpson was to walking out someone. of court, filming a couple <laughs> scenes, and going into court the next day. <laughs> Those went real close. I want to say Naked Gun thirty three and a third might have been after he already did the murders. <laughs> So yeah, then it's oh, no, you no, have to was... murder someone within the next five years to um you know give our to give the naked verse its re its resonance. Look, you yeah, know, I think Hollywood, everyone who's everyone who can get a role in a Hollywood film these days has already murdered you know fifty children. So okay, Naked Gun thirty three. I think and just the presence of Hillary Clinton in this film has just got me thinking <laughs> about like. like... <laughs> <laughs> I know it's 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 funny because the the jokes about. The Clintons are like so wholesome, you know. It's yeah. like, oh, just a little bit <laughs> oh, of Midland, He likes know? a boob. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Which, so but... <laughs> so Naked Gun thirty three and a third, the final insult came out in nineteen ninety four. Oh, that's the, uh, the year. OJ Simpson the murder trial. OJ Simpson murder trial started in September twenty sixth, nineteen ninety four. I think there was a decent <laughs> what is the... case for overlap. What is the release date for? The exact release. Give me a date second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Three and a third. That's why I'm just saying the entire title, the final uh, insult. I'm giving you time. I'm buying IMDb, you IMDb. IMDb doesn't like tell you dates very easily. Wikipedia usually has them. I have found myself uh, veering more and more to Wikipedia when I'm looking up the stuff these days. Uh, March eighteenth, nineteen ninety four. When was when was the? I'm looking up when the actual murders. murder took place. <laughs> 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 hey, at least we're doing the research, man. On air, uh, June 12th was the murder. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. So it came out. So his promotion so for the VHS release, he was done with the promotion for the film. He was just like, oh, I hate promoting films. I'm gonna go kill. Take... I he was like, oh, That was such a great action movie. I love violence. What am I gonna do next? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, man, I've been just going to every screening of this film, doing coke all night. <laughs> what he like goes to like different cinemas around town, like watching the same movie that he's in. <laughs> yeah, just getting more and more. Are angry you are you telling today. me, Matt, that if you were in like a major Hollywood movie, you wouldn't do that? <laughs> like watch it four times in different theaters in one night? No, well, I don't I know why. Was I, 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 well, not in one night, but I go to like a different theater every night for a month. I think. <laughs> What's I, research? I read, uh, that's what Schwarzenegger with, uh... go to go back to um Schwarzenegger. Like... 
Hercules in oh. New York. Like when Schwarzenegger did his first couple of films, he used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he would go to the theater and then afterwards he would just stand outside the screen and be like, hi, I was in the movie. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I, I, I read an interview. With, what did uh... you think of the movie? <laughs> Probably. I look at this. Yeah, it'd be like his, uh, what his commentary is where he's like, look, this that's is not a special where... effect. This is my arm. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I drive the car. I get in the car and drive the car. Yeah, this, and this is where I shoot this guy and he dies. No, I was reading an interview with Brad Dorif who said he'd like never seen One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Like you say, he just doesn't watch things he after he's in them. Um, Adam think... Driver's like that as well. Adam yeah, Driver I can't think... see himself in film. It's a pretty yeah. normal thing, I think, where actors just can't watch themselves. See, I um, I had resistance to it, but I started listening to every podcast I'm on with you guys just to try and get better at talking. Mm. Mm. So someday maybe I'll be good at it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe talking. I don't have better. a problem with listening to my own podcast. It's just that we make so many at this point that I can't listen to them all. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where I've landed. <laughs> like the game game show, I genuinely love listening back to that. Like if I'm out yeah. for a hike and I've got like eight podcasts that day, that sometimes is my favorite one. Which is pretty, <laughs> I have to listen. Like... <laughs> I have to listen to that in the car because sometimes, like, I'll listen to that while I'm walking. I'll just like crack up at something. What was God? What was it something that must said that made me like fucking absolutely lose it while i'm walking down the street and people were like staring at me i was like shit i don't know something that you didn't know i do okay, that a lot yeah. but i'm in rice field so <laughs> nobody cares yeah in rice field americans yeah. are like will stare at you for like anything mm. like, what are you, you smiling now. at i'm staring at you you some kind you? of smiler are you in <laughs> Are you some kind of Hillary Clinton pedophile? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good introduction. Hey, folks, uh, I, I'm i a lawyer. Uh, I like pina coladas on the sand. I'm a Hillary Clinton pedophile. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. I'm not George Soros. I'm not going to date you. Why don't you go date George Soros? <laughs> yeah, it's a the, power um, couple. Is the video of Hillary Clinton eating a child's face on the bottom 100 or the top 100? <laughs> <laughs> when do we get to the frazzled red? <laughs> I mean, it's definitely in the top 100 because Hollywood elites keep putting it up there. That's true, yeah. You have to have the worst case of suicide if you watch it, man. Mm. It's like the ring. <laughs> right. You have to eat, you watch it and you have to eat someone's face or else you'll die. Mm. Oh, okay, there we go. If you were um, going to eat someone's face, whose face would you eat? Matt, Matt you go first. Is it, it, does it have to be a real person? Can it be a character? Can I eat Can I eat Pizza the Hut from Spaceballs? He was delicious. <laughs> I was going to say Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> that tells us something we probably don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would eat Mark's face. Mm, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> I think I get the most delicious Woo. face. Mark's would be delicious if it were cooked, but I don't think. Can you? No, he has I to mean, be alive. I eat a lot of junk food, so it probably is pretty tasty. Actually, it's probably like okay. A think, okay. That's how it works. Do you think people eat junk food have tastier flesh? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> actually, like, yeah. People I guess talk you have about to... like farm animals being like corn fed and stuff. Yeah, if it turns right. out that like the best pigs are just fed on like McDonald's fries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it like if you if you're in trouble you can't eat your dog because your dog's a carnivore, so you can't eat like you're supposed to eat uh herbivores because uh -huh. predators don't taste good. That's why I heard. Well if you're eating your dog, anyway. there's probably some issues going on, so you could that's all you have. Mm. Uh but I was gonna ask well, I've never eaten a dog, but I've eaten plenty of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> have have you um how does your face taste? Is it delicious? He's thinking about it. Uh, it's like dog's mine... pepper at the moment. <laughs> no, I was trying to lick my own face. <laughs> I'm definitely mine. Definitely tastes like junk food that I was eating earlier. Okay. Oh so, yeah, pretty good. But you know, <laughs> haven't cooked it yet. Uh, it's like I'll the you know cow in the restaurant at the end of the universe. Have I told you the story about my math teacher in junior high school? You have, but go for it. Yeah, we were talking to him about the restaurant at the end of the universe and how the animals want to be eaten. And he just bends over, slaps his ass at a girl who on a different table who was not in the conversation and goes, fancy some rum? <laughs> <laughs> and he was fired the next day. <laughs> no, this was Britain in the mid-2000s. You can do whatever you want. Jeez. Is that who keeps leaving those Elden Ring messages? <laughs> like, behold Try rum. Try finger butthole. 
Yes. I've seen at least six try finger buttholes. <laughs> Several behold rump. Yep. I mean, my favorite I love that is... every single animal is animal is look a dog. Yeah, behold dog. <laughs> I mean, my favorite is just when you get into a corner and it says, "Why is it always message?" <laughs> or something like that. Well, there was one where it was in front of a box and it said, "Snake, snake." That's good. That's yeah, very good. That was hmm. the best. That's the best joke. In really uh, in Dark Souls one, it was always just <laughs> for every female character. It has amazing chest ahead. <laughs> that that one lady who like holds you next to her bed or whatever oh put, yeah, yeah, yeah i put a message that said now time for physical <laughs> excellent <laughs> uh it was rated uh about half and half good and poor this all sounds like spy code to me but... and you is. can leave messages for other players but you don't get to type you have to use preset phrases uh, okay. so for, yeah, for people to make crude less. jokes they have to find a way to use like the phrases they've got <laughs> yeah like i found a village that looked like midsummer and i couldn't use the word summer or mid so i couldn't make that joke hot center hot center uh i don't, I don't think you can do that okay i was just trying to think of how i could like do hot center without... would be the leslie nielsen parody of midsummer <laughs> <laughs> i would oh man someone needs to it's too bad parodies resurrect are dead. resurrect leslie nielsen from the grave and have him make hot center <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's too bad parodies are dead because Midsummer would be a great parody. You could do a lot with that. Liam Neeson. Well, in in Sweden, people just laugh at Midsummer and consider it a parody. Well, okay, because <laughs> they find true. the whole thing so ridiculous. I mean, it it has some genuinely funny parts in it. Some yeah. probably more funny parts than two thousand one a space travesty. But me and Matt have talked about this before, back when we were doing like the first Kelvin vs Star Trek. The reason parody doesn't exist anymore is because the films just do it themselves. Yeah, there's a little bit too much comedic integration where it's like the point people are obsessed with. I think they're only obsessed with Zack Snyder films because like Zack Snyder dares to just not put jokes in his films. Yep, yep, yep. It's like the main thing. And also the whatever hot slow motion. Is he the least funny modern director then? No, I think like um, what's his name? Vil Neuve's not very funny. Nah, Aronofsky isn't very funny either. Yeah. I yeah. haven't seen The Whale, but I'm assuming that's not a, a barrel of laughs. <laughs> I guess Lars von Trier is not funny. Actually, I think Lars von Trier is still funnier than those two. Okay. Like, <laughs> like he, I, There were a annoying. lot of memes when the Batman came out where it's like a, someone screaming and it's like Marvel fans when Batman says a line and doesn't say, did I just say that afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, It was, um, you know... It's I like dry comedy and mm -hmm. there isn't a whole lot of that anymore. There's like quippy stuff and there's like no jokes at all. But, you know, the last movie that I really well, Cocaine Bear was really good. That was really mm -hmm. funny without being uh, too silly. But I mean, the death of Stalin is the last time I really like really, really connected with a comedy. And that was like. I don't think a lot of people saw that. I think a lot of people even didn't think it was a comedy because <laughs> I liked Jojo Rabbit, but that was Jojo Rabbit was pretty good. I thought it was like <laughs> maybe a little bit too. Uh... I don't know. Something was a little off about it. It wasn't. I mean, yeah, it wasn't the best film I've ever seen. We have like comedy blinders, you know, living in Japan because the comedies don't play here, you know. So I don't, yeah, mo like, most of them don't get released. I'm just like, oh, they don't make comedies anymore. I mean, it's been so. I've been in Japan, mm -hmm. so I'm, I guess they don't make comedies anymore. But I guess that's clearly wrong. Is that I mean, wrong? I, I write. But I... they don't get so much of like a cinema release, right? I mean, I love Hong Kong comedies, and I don't really understand them entirely. But they're all extremely problematic. I mean, all the ones that I've seen, like I can't even can't even tell you a bunch of the jokes. Well, is that just because they're in Chinese? Yes. No, it's because it's like cancelable stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a you know, obviously it's a cultural thing, like mm -hmm. you know, broad humor. That's why I Michael Bay can like, yeah, that's why Michael Bay can put like things in that offend people in Transformers movies, and they do huge business in china because like in china it's like oh racist transformers that's hilarious <laughs> well, um i was watching the first transformers the other night with mercy my girlfriend and she she's the one who wanted to watch it but part way through i just turned to her during the film and i'm like huh there's a lot of casual racism towards mexicans in hollywood huh yeah <laughs> she's mexican <laughs> i was 2007 was a little different but yeah so i'm I don't sure know, but 
most of the time I've been friends with Mexicans, they're also less politically correct than me. So yeah, I mean, she didn't like give a shit, but yeah, it is it, it, yeah. like watching it with the Mexican girl sat right next to me, and you do start <laughs> to notice, like, wow, it's they. I didn't even notice it. They do it so often in American films. <laughs> Um, I'm sure our listeners are waiting with bated breath and anticipation if we consider this movie to be a film or, or film. <laughs> what what do I say for a film where I just feel nothing? <laughs> <laughs> it's Void. dust in the wind. Time passed and I'm there were rate images it. on my screen. <laughs> Can I go with I'm gonna rate it. Wind? I'm gonna rate it. This is Phil. Mm. Yeah, it's Phil. It filled some time. It's a filler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but it's it's not as bad as like a floating bubble of shit. No. Okay. no I've seen worse. At no point was I upset that I was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was more confused than angry. It was just sort of like if I I think this would have been more fun to watch if it had been in a theater where I was forced to pay attention to it and not had to actually know what was happening <laughs> that might have been more fun let me say it one more time oh, see so I'm, they... I'm glad that i was distracted and doing a bunch of other stuff while it was <laughs> maybe i would have hated it if i'd had to just sit and look at just it yeah it's hard to let, tell let, let me put it down so uh, when they put out the uh, 25th anniversary blu-ray release of this they can put my quote on the front of the box better than a floating bubble of shit yeah they might okay. do that they might I take hope that. so i, yeah, I, I hope, hope they so. take my quote Time passed and there were images on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they take the part of my summary where I said that the alien propelled around the room with their farts and then was exploded by a slingshot into green slime. Mm. That goes on the back of the box. That goes on the back of the box. Yeah, that's a description. Good. I hope they put it belongs on there. the front of the box. My quote: Hillary Clinton ate a child's face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, uh, here's my quote you will believe that a man got hit in the balls with a fake moon did you believe no i mean it happened it was a practical <laughs> effect i guess they <laughs> probably shielded his balls but you know they didn't that's that's the character did. yeah horrible we don't have the budget <laughs> they they castrated a man with brute force in this movie <laughs> <laughs> that's the real travel yeah what is the space travesty in this movie the movie okay <laughs> I, you know I, I i think that's on the nose I, I don't think there's any duplicity there we can all get that how much of this like film disaster is space? movie that's the travesty is it's not in space well it's every like... every event in every film was in space that's a good point withdrawn guess, guess what <laughs> we, we just talked about the space travesty, travesty yes. for a longer time than Ikiru. Nice. <laughs> Did we though? I mean, how much of that was talking about space travesty, and how much of Ikiru was talking about Ikiru? That's the question. Yeah. <laughs> it's, this but always hope... happens because there was a point like twenty minutes in where I was like, "God, we're done. How are we going to drag this out?" <laughs> Here we are, forty minutes later. We've talked about the O.J. Simpson trial. <laughs> I think that seems to happen with Twilight Zone episodes where the episodes are longer when there's less going on in the actual episode because we just talk about whatever. Mm. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I guess we wrap it up then. Are we wrapping up? Got a, yeah. got a, got a hot take for this movie? Um, naked Space Gun. I'd like to take a hot dump on this movie. <laughs> a lot of these characters took a hot dump. Hmm. That's mm, right. Space. Hot dump the movie. That that's what it should be called. Hot <laughs> dump the movie. <laughs> now that's the parody of Hot Fuzz, where everyone's just shitting the entire time. <laughs> no, hot, hot that's a, that's the... a parody of a parody. Of that <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh no, I was gonna say Hot Dump the movie should be a parody of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. That's like, why aren't there more movies like Hot Fuzz like that? That's where comedy should have gone, and they just didn't. Because it takes a lot of good writing and talent to make those films. <laughs> yeah, and also wasn't that movie like a ninety million dollar movie too? Like, it was like that's ridiculous. that's what I hope should happen with the Naked I think it was Gun pretty remake. Pretty successful though. They make I mean, a parody of the Naked Gun. Mm. My favorite Edgar Wright movie. That's successful. I guess. It's it feels like my favorite, but that's just because it's filmed in my hometown, and we all watched it over and over. So. Yeah, you have bias. Like, Scott Pilgrim was my favorite until I actually thought about it. <laughs> yeah. 
80, 80 million. No, wait, that's how much it made. The budget was 12 to 16 million. Well, it yeah, really yeah. I was about to say, I think it was a pretty small budget because it's oh, just hot buzz. talent. <laughs> Is that on the top 100? No. no. Should be. You failed us, IMDb. <laughs> you, the, the users failed you. I'm going to like chastise IMDb at the end of every episode. <laughs> Don't hate IMDb. Hate the, um, hate the, the don't hate the YouTube. game hate the players is what that's the players <laughs> hate, hate the hate the people rating the films oh hold on um i i actually i do have one closed out thing i i, I want to go or maybe mark you should do this because you have imdb open to you uh i can can you read us a hot um, buzz on it go ahead can, can you read us a positive review of this movie just put oh you know, best first yeah wow we should be doing that shouldn't we yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell tell us a nice. Okay. Do you want us to record the Ikiri one now, and you can edit it in, Matt? Do what? <laughs> you want it's us to? Should idea. we record a negative review of Ikiru now, so you can just check it in? Oh, oh, sure, maybe we can do that too. Um... <clears throat> right, well, you find a positive one of this. Okay. I'll find a negative one of Ikiru. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll just, I'll just, I'll try and it. find a good one, uh, if possible. Okay. Matt, you just this make you just write down the timestamp so you remember to edit out these bits of us chatting shit. This is near the end. I can find <laughs> it easily. Okay. Yeah, but the, I know you can. My question <laughs> is whether you will. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, so... I didn't edit Andrew's asshole out of the last Twilight Zone. Oops. You can stay on TV. <laughs> uh, make sure to wait. Well, as long as I there's a nice long word. space between ass and hole, you're fine. Remember to edit out when I said fucking in the last Twilight Zone that we did. I did. Um, okay. Remember to so, edit out the video version when I stood up and got my dick out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't edit video. That's what you do. <laughs> okay, so it, it's okay if it's a nine out of ten and not a ten out of ten. Yeah, we're you know you got to grab for what you can grab. I'm just like I'm just looking for one that looks the most cringe. <laughs> yeah, nine out of ten is fine. Give it to us. All right, nine out of ten stars. Says Joel O'Man, wow, is the title of the review. Dot, 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 wow, dot, dot, dot. I just saw this movie for the first time and I can see why I didn't run out and see it when it first came out five years ago. Although the movie had a horrible plot, low budget special effects, and was generally unentertaining, it did have a saving point and her name is Cassandra Minaj, played by Ophelia Winter, and it has a link to her IMDb page. And that's the reason I chose to rate this film as a nine. Although her filmography isn't that long, mostly containing foreign and international films, her beauty absolutely took my breath away. Ophelia Winter is definitely at the top of my list of the most beautiful women in the world, and I hope to see that she is recognized soon for it. I, I sincerely doubt it, but if Ophelia Winter actually gets the chance to read this, you are a beautiful woman, talented actress, and I truly hope to see you in future films as you expand your fruitful acting career. Five out of 13 found this helpful. So he's just writing a mash note to the actress. Yeah. Is okay. that funny enough? I guess. <laughs> is that just, is that just <laughs> like, so... sad and I shouldn't do that? <laughs> no, it's just... <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure for any film we watch, we can find some pervert who's just giving it a high rating because they fancied one of the cats. <laughs> All right, let me, let me just do this one and you can pick. And if, and if you hate both of these, I'll just find another one. So, okay. <laughs> 10 out of 10 stars. Airplane right. in Space, part two. Note that I've called this review Airplane in Space, part two, is because there has already been an airplane movie that had taken place in space. Hey, cool rhyme. Airplane 2, the sequel, was the name. Anyways, I've called it that because Leslie Nielsen is in this movie. I remember him from the airplane movies, and I best know him from all three Naked Gun movies. The Naked Gun from the Files of Police Squad, The Naked Gun Two and a Half, and The Naked Gun 33 and a Third, all of which are reminiscent to the airplane movies because something funny happens every 10 seconds or so. I guess this must be Mr. Nielsen's trademark or something because 2001 A Space Travesty is just as funny as all the other movies mentioned. Five out of 16 found this helpful. They used too many words. Far too many words. <laughs> we were just talking about how someone should come on screen and explain the jokes to you. <laughs> and this here guy. comes this gentleman <laughs> who spends the whole review explaining the joke that was his title. <laughs> this is like my favorite part of how did this get made is just when they read these fucking terrible reviews. 
Oh, don't uh, point out that we're stealing it from another podcast. Jeez. Oh, well, you can beep that out. <laughs> no, no, out. no, that that doesn't get edited. <laughs> you you call your shot. <laughs> well, I just insulted them by saying that was the best thing in their podcast. That's true. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you want another one? No, let's do an Ikiru one and then wrap it up. Okay. Okay. So there's a bunch that just complain about it being slow and boring. Okay. But not the only way to live. One star. So a man's lifetime work is ridiculed. And we're supposed to believe instead that he would have been better off living. Defined as skipping work for numerous days, drinking copious amounts of alcohol, and visiting strip clubs. All based on the advice of a random stranger met in a bar. I could only assume the high rating of this film is due to sensitivity towards the irreproachable topic of cancer, which maybe, just maybe, the filmmakers were using to leverage more sinister social ideas. Two out of 24 found this helpful. <laughs> At least somebody found it helpful. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to laugh during that whole thing. See, Ikaru is just a, an exercise in destroying good old-fashioned family values. <laughs> I mean, look what's happened in the 70 years since Ikaru, man. <laughs> Everything's just, yeah. yeah. Where, where the is, question where, is where's good old <laughs> racist morals now? We don't even know whether it was an American or Japanese or someone else who wrote that review. It's almost like, mm. everyone wants to work. Go to work. It was an American, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I guess we'll pull the train into the shed. What do we do? Um, we make podcasts. You can find them on the internet. If you go to patreon.com slash podcastia podcastias, you'll find links to all the podcasts me and Matt create. And you can listen to all of them for free. But if you want, you can give us a dollar a month to help keep the podcasts online and you'll get to listen to them a little bit early. Wouldn't that be fun for you? Mm. That's that's such a wonderfully dissatisfied review you gave there. Well, you should. Okay. <laughs> Mark says it. It must be true. Mm. Exactly. I guess I'm. Guess I'm going to go watch 2001: A Space Travesty again. Okay, 2010: A Space Travesty. I'm going to go lift some weights. I'm going to go to sleep. Well, you win. I guess. Okay, that's the cut, cutting, cutting there. <laughs>